When I was a teenager, I used to be really egotistical about my lack of addiction. I wasn't smoking, drinking, doing drugs. I wasn't watching porn. So I felt really good about myself. But that was like 20 years ago. And back then, psychologists weren't labeling things like shopping, screen time or sugar as addictions. Of course, what we know now is that although the behaviors are different and some are socially acceptable and some are not, the underlying patterns and the underlying issues are actually similar. So first, we're going to look at the biology of your addiction, because it's important to understand what's happening in your brain and body. And then I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that you may not have tried before that will help to ease off the addiction rather than using force and willpower to go against the addiction. Hi, I'm Roseanne Clay, helping you deliberately create a life you love. If you've been dwelling in the space of healing your addiction, then you probably already know about dopamine. Dopamine is a reward mechanism. It gets released in our body whenever we do something satisfying. So let's say we go and give someone a hug or we do an act of service. Then we get a hit of dopamine and it makes us feel great. If we do an unhealthy behavior, like our addictive behaviors, we will also get that dopamine fix. The problem with our addictive behaviors is that over time, we need more and more dopamine to get the same hit, which means that we need to do more of our addictive behavior to get that extra dopamine. You might have noticed that when you're using willpower to stop your addictive behavior, you become exhausted, tired, frustrated, and moody. That's because dopamine regulates sleep, mood, learning, behavior, and emotions. Here's where our nervous system comes into play. Our nervous system manages the production of our dopamine. Have you ever wondered why your addiction started in the first place? I know a lot of us have stories and it might have been peers that influenced us or, you know, things in our childhood that influenced us to start our addictive behavior. But have you ever thought about the biology behind why we started our behavior? You might have noticed that people with addictions have had rough childhoods. Well, did you know that rough childhoods can lead to your nervous system malfunctioning? And when your nervous system is not working properly, it can lead to an increase in risky behavior, an increase in stress, an increase in appetite, an increase in inflammatory diseases, a decrease in motivation, a decrease in the ability to learn, a decrease in the ability to sleep, and a decrease in metabolism. As you can see, there's a ton of processes that break down when your nervous system breaks. But why did your nervous system break down in the first place? Before we understand why, what is our nervous system? Relative to our addiction, our nervous system is part of a process that manages our safety and well-being. In other words, it's the part of our brain that activates and deactivates the fight or flight response. Let's use the analogy of fire. When you're scared, your brain activates an alarm, kind of like a smoke detector, and that triggers sensors. Let's imagine the sprinklers start to go off, the fire brigade gets called, the fire truck rushes to help, the hoses come blasting, and all the energy is spent on putting out this fire. That's your sympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system is all about safety and survival. Now let's imagine the fire has been put out, this is when the parasympathetic nervous system gets activated. So imagine that the, the hoses are getting packed up, people are clearing the debris, and a new building is getting built. Now let's imagine you're in the fire. Your sympathetic nervous system gets activated. So your body gets pumped with glucose and oxygen. So you have the energy to run out of the fire and your mind gets altered so that you are focused solely on survival. All your decision-making is about safety and getting out of there. Now let's imagine you're safely out of the building. Your parasympathetic nervous system gets activated. Your glucose levels and oxygen levels return to normal and your brain switches back into growing and thriving mode. If you had a rough childhood, then your brain's alarm system got activated too much and didn't get switched off enough. In other words, it's like the fire hoses are still going on that fire and the alarm bells are still ringing and you're still running around inside that building not knowing if there really is a fire or not. The parasympathetic nervous system didn't get a chance to activate enough to get your brain into growth and thriving mode and get your body back into a state of calm and relaxation. Because your nervous system malfunctioned, 
adequate dopamine levels were not getting produced to satisfy the requirements of your body to help with your emotions and behaviors and learning. And so our brain began to look for other sources of dopamine and we found certain behaviors and certain substances really filled that dopamine gap that we were looking for. But take a deep breath. This is not the end. Your nervous system can be fixed. The alarm bells in your brain can be regulated. By regularly and deliberately activating your parasympathetic nervous system in a holistic way, you can taper off your addiction without needing to use willpower or force. So how do we do that? To start with, change the focus. What we resist persists. The more I focus on my sugar addiction, the more it haunts me. The more willpower I need, the more dopamine I need to overcome all the efforts I've put in. By changing the focus to your mental well-being and enhancing your mental wellness, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system and decreases the stress on that need for dopamine. There are many ways to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. One of the simplest ways is to spend an hour playing sport because you're not thinking about any of the stresses of the day which generally activate the sympathetic nervous system. Instead, what you're doing is focusing on the game and that change in focus activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And of course, all the good hormones that get released when you're exercising helps you to relax and helps you to feel good. Sleep and nutrition are very important again for helping you to maintain balanced hormones in your body and help you to regulate your nervous system and finding a good strong support group that targets your addiction. Support groups target one of the key things that was missing as a child which is to feel safe and supported. You could also find friends and family that are compassionate towards what you're going through but don't have the same addiction as you that are able to support you. One of the critical things that I love doing with my clients and with myself to help overcome these sorts of adversities like addiction is to focus on healing the inner child. Your inner child is still locked in your subconscious mind, suffering from not feeling safe and not feeling supported. And by using a tool like visualization or tapping to focus on the inner child, you can help that child to feel like they are part of a community, feel like you love them and you are there for them. So right now, I'd ask you to please close your eyes and imagine a younger version of yourself in a safe environment, in a happy environment, when they were feeling good. And look at that child and build a relationship with them. So ask them if it's safe for you to approach them. Introduce yourself as your future self. And then say to them, is it okay if I talk to you? Now, as you start to build this relationship with the child, whenever you notice your, the inner child moves to a stressful situation, you can calmly and lovingly say things like, I'm here to support you. I love you. I'm here to look after you. Don't worry. I'm here to protect you. And the more you create these types of visualizations, the stronger the feeling will be and the stronger the connection you will have to that inner child. And this reprograms your subconscious mind so that the parasympathetic nervous system gets regularly and deliberately activated to the point that you no longer are using your sympathetic nervous system by default, but instead your nervous system is regulating itself as you want it to. Take the time to do that inner child work. And what I would love to hear from you is what are the sorts of phrases that your inner child has been looking for? What are the sorts of requirements, the needs, the very basic needs like love, affection, companionship, that they are looking for. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I hope you found this useful. There are a lot of useful links in the description. If you need extra support, feel free to contact me. My email is in the description. And if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one sessions, again, please just feel free to reach out to me. Sending you so much love and light on your journey. Bye for now.